this protection. Don't worry about it. We won't show you unless you want to be seen. Uh, and the, anyways, uh, my daughter uh, Raquel is handling the producing job right now. So the only thing that goes through to the live stream is pretty much the presentation. And for now, myself. Until, of course, something else is decided otherwise. During, of course, our regular Teams meeting, what you can see in the Teams meeting is traditional. So just relax and pretend you're just at the Teams meeting. Um, and so we're about ready to start over here. We have enough people for a quorum to get started. I will, uh, I believe we can see the starting screen. There's our new, our new, our new banner is up there. Uh, Raquel, thank you very much for the banner. Good job. Well done. Good job, honey. Uh, let's go ahead and see so that what is we the have. Shed Aquarium in the foreground, if anybody has not yes. been to Chicago. Uh -huh. There we go. And the Sears Tower, where, where it used to be, has been replaced by our logo, so. <laughs> or the Willis Tower. If you're so, so, she did a pretty good job. She actually replaced the entire uh, uh, Willis I know, Tower. I know. I'm impressed by that. It, it's gone. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, who do we got here? We got uh, Craig. Craig, me. I'm having technical difficulties, so I can't get my camera to work. Um, we'll we'll so, imagine you from your LinkedIn. Yes, me with my dog. Um, so I'm Craig Janke. I am a customer engineer for Microsoft. I used to be, I did some, so I've been at Microsoft almost three years now. Um, I was in several consulting roles before that. Um, and when I was in one of the previous ones, me and Ralph kind of started this group up. So this is almost three years old now. Um, just kind of we're getting into the Power Platform and wanted to start the community out here. So that's what we are and that's what we do. And hopefully um, you'll get some something out of this. If you have any questions, you don't want to come off mute and ask, please use the chat. We'll try to answer them. Right. Um, or if you just want to make snide comments like Ralph does yeah. when he's when he's guesting, you're free to do that too. This is true, especially in the chat. A lot of the, those little line, one-liners I put in there. Yes. Absolutely. Those will be saved for posterity. Ralph, you want to talk about yourself? Uh, yes, uh, here we go. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to talk about myself a little bit more later. Uh, just right now, Ralph, where he was so jetty, don't worry, we'll, we'll cover a little bit of that because actually it's part of my presentation to say who I am. So I'll reintroduce okay. myself then. And then so, we have Raquel, who is our AV talent, I guess. Uh, uh, well, she's a producer. They don't they don't call it AV anymore. You know, when when they were growing up, they were the AV people, the video guy or the video gal. Now they're like the producer. They're the EPs. They're you know they they have roles now. So she's our I producer. I don't know if she wants to say hi or not. So. <laughs> Here she is. Thanks. Thanks. We really appreciate that all the effort. Um, so normally uh, we would kind of go through who's here. We got 15 people. Um, it's not that many because we've already covered three of them. If you want to just do like a um, Ralph, if you want to pull the list over, we could go through them quickly. Um, just say sure. who you are, hi, who you are, and um, let's go through this where you're from. Here, that's it, and see what we got. Let's see what we got. Okay, uh, if you're on video, I will show you right now. Here we go. Okay, uh, I guess you're uh, Dimitri. You start. You're out of witness protection. Tell us uh, yes, hi, when you're here. Hi. Go ahead. I'm I'm here from Quebec, uh, Canada. I'm an IT consultant working for a big X number of thousand of employees doing IT work. So. Bienvenue, Dimitri. Merci. Thanks. Then you yeah. want to just start at the list. Yes. Um, we got Beth on top here. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes perfectly. perfectly. Um, so I am Beth Beck. I current re currently reside in Minnesota, but I'm relocating to Florida, and I'm a huge Chicago Bears fan, so if that's not confusing, I don't know what well, is. Well, um, I feel but, sorry yeah. for you that you're you're in Minnesota, <laughs> and, you, and you're in a Bears fan because you didn't play too good last week. I'll actually be in Chicago this weekend for the Detroit game, so we'll see what oh, goes there. Yeah, um, I've been no, working I'm with jealous. the health platform for a while, and I work for a healthcare company based out of Florida, and been doing SharePoint since the first version rolled out 20-ish years ago. So wow. that's a little bit about so you me. you started like at five? That's... Yeah, exactly. Feels <laughs> like it. I think that's when we all started. We were all about right. five or six. Yep. Uh, all right. Thanks for coming. Yep. Thank you. Um, just going down the list over here, we have Cindy on the next person on the list. <laughs> If you care to say hello. If you don't, it's okay. Just say decline and we'll go to the next. 
Uh, all right, Cindy is on mute. Can we go to Diana? So let's go to Diana. If you'd like to say hi. Sure. Um, I am Diana. I can't tell if my camera's on, but um, I've been working with Power Platform for since June, June 28th. And so um, I'm just here to learn what I can so I can be better at my job and wow. try to make sure I keep it. It's very fresh. Perfect. <laughs> it's very specific, too. But Yes, um, it is. Thanks. <laughs> Where are you from, Diana? Um, well, I'm from East Africa, but I actually live... I live in Chicago, and I'm about two hours south right now. I'm visiting okay. family. Well, there we go. Well, we're international here, so this is perfect. Thanks for coming. We did Dimitri. Eric just joined. I just let him in. Um, okay, so before Eric goes, actually, I have, I have, I have a video over here. I have Jeff, Jeffrey Faulkner. You get, you get to say hi because you actually did, uh, came out of witness protection, and it's okay. Hmm. Welcome back. Good afternoon. They're not after. They're not after you anymore. No, oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, Jeff Faulkner. I'm in Tracy, California. I work for a, uh, a food manufacturer out here, and um, we use the Power Platform for many things, including SharePoint automation um, and our um, integrations for Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. Ooh, perfect. Nice. Our Little known fact is we do like food, so. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I work for Musco Family Olive Company, so we're Absolutely. an olive processor out here in California. Uh, oh, nice. A really quick, a really quick tip for those who are not here, uh, but in the United States, maybe even Canada, uh, lumalnatis.com, and uh, you can pretend that you're joining us for the user group dinner. All right. Just saying, that's a quick advertising. Uh, on the next person on my video, I have Gary. Gary, you came up uh, out of witness protection to join us. I did. I um, think I probably are the furthest away uh, attendee. I'm living in Christchurch, New Zealand. Oh, oh wonderful. Nice. I always wanted wow. to go to New Zealand. Yeah, well, you can come down sometime when we open the borders and let you in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think if you knew me, you would never do that. But <laughs> Well, I, I have this ring. I have this ring, and I'm supposed to drop it into this mountain. You think I'll oh, let me yeah. in for that? Yeah. I know the spot for you. I've just got the spot. Uh, ha. <laughs> I, knew, I yeah, called it, did I? Yeah, I've um, yeah, I've been working with SharePoint for about twenty years as well. I work for a um, a service company over here that develop applications and solutions for all sorts of primary industry. So I do a lot with SharePoint and Azure and Power Platform and all sorts, really. Wonderful. Nice. Thanks for coming. Very much welcome. Uh, I have another person on screen that has come out also of uh, from Witness Protection. Eric, Eric Anderson, please say hi. I will. Hey, everyone. Uh, Eric Anderson. I work uh, primarily in Microsoft Cloud Security, and uh, we're really building out the 365 suite, and uh, I'll be responsible for the detailed security design and uh, don't really know that much about Power Platform and uh, hoping to learn more today and uh, what I should be doing. Absolutely. We'll be getting you there. All right. All right. Thank you. Where are you from, Eric? Oh, yes. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Oh, there's a couple of you people. Again, from Minnesota. Yes, very good. All right, uh, let's go down the list over here. Uh, all right, I have uh, Renee Figueroa. If I've you would like to. Name before. Yes, I have. Hi. Just say... Hey, how's it going, everyone? Very, Hello. very good. Um, currently driving home from work, so I'll keep ah. it short. Um, <clears throat> I work for, I'm out of the Chicago, Chicago land area. I work at Illinois Tool Works. Um, my team uh, is part of the enterprise team. So we mainly support the enterprise at the enterprise level, but we work with the corporate teams as well. So a lot of um, consulting and also developing as well under the power platform. Wow. Cool. Sounds great. Thanks okay. for joining. Thank you. Uh, stay safe on the uh, on the road there. Yep. Uh, All righty. Uh, let's see. We have on the list. We did Gary. We did. We're down to Jane, I believe. We're down to Jane. Jane Ramirez. Would you care to say hi? Hi, hi everyone. 
So um, I'm Jane, and I'm working um, mainly on Power BI, which is part of our platform, which and that's the the reason why um, I'd like to more, know more about it. And um, yeah, but my knowledge in Power Platform, um, Power Automate, and other stuff are not as uh, not well. I'm just a beginner at that sure thing. Um, part. Yeah. So I'm working in I'm working in a transportation company in Auckland, New Zealand. Oh, oh wow! So I'm also in New Zealand. Couple of New yeah. Zealand. <laughs> wow, they're all coming in from now. Uh, we're gonna have night. to see where you stand from from. Uh... <laughs> Which way is Mount Doom? Is, is uh, Mordor? Is Who's that closer? Way <laughs> Who lives <laughs> closer? To... <laughs> Who lives closer to the Shire? No. Okay. Uh, okay. So thank you. I live closer to the Shire. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, yes. Ways in the for sure. All right. Uh, where to Joe? Joe. Joe Camp. Say hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, so I'm Joe. Um, I uh, am about 16 miles east of Seattle, and I am a vendor doing work at Microsoft on the cloud advocacy team focused on Power Platform. Beautiful. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for coming, Joe. Joe, for some reason, I thought you were going to say I'm 6'2". Six, six I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 that's the different app. Yeah. That's the different uh, site. Yeah. Um, All righty. Cool. I Thanks, Joe. Called... Thanks for coming. We need yeah. to speed this up, Ralph, because we're, yes, we're taking a little bit. Let's go ahead. She dropped. She dropped. Okay. Um, Mike. Mike. Mike's a regular. He was at our first meeting. Hi, hi everyone. I am Mikey Swire. I work for Harper College. Uh, one of the hats I wear is to oversee our O365 tenants. So I kind of need to be able to wrangle all of what you guys are doing. Ah. And then as well as kind of dabble in O365 and Power Platform for some others. Nice. Thanks for coming. Moe's? again. Uh, Mose, yes, Mose. Or Hello. Mose. Hello. My name is Mose Richardson. Mose, yes, I, I get that wrong every time. <laughs> yeah, I'm a customer engineer for Microsoft with the Power Platform. Um, my specialties are Power, uh, Power, some Power Automate. Don't really do anything with Power BI. Um, I'm based outside of Oklahoma. Oh wow, nice, right in the middle. Yep. Uh, thanks for coming. Beautiful. Uh, Mustafa, do you care to say hello? It's okay. He might be uh, busy at the moment. Uh, Norm. Uh, no, Richard, Richard Norman. Richard Norman, yeah. sir. Hey, how are you doing? Um, Very good. I um, Yeah, Richard Norman. I've been working with Craig for the past few weeks, and so he mentioned the PowerPoint platform, uh, the meeting here, so I decided to jump in and take a listen and see what's going on. And I've been uh, developing since I was about eight years old, and oh, – and worked in SharePoint since it was the uh, uh, dashboard technology they had way back before it launched as SharePoint. Um, and then worked for Microsoft for about eight years. And now I'm working with Fresno County here. So thanks for coming. I'm glad somebody I invited came. <laughs> <laughs> you get Great. a point, Craig. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, we, I think we're good. We did a who's here over here. Uh, if folks will join in later, maybe they can chat and go ahead and introduce themselves. That's fine. We pretty much have an idea of who's on the line. Let's All right. Let's proceed. go to the next page. Let's, Let's go, go to the, the next oh, page. To, yeah. Yeah. I got to kick the button down here. All, All right. right. Uh, what's our, our our agenda today? We're just we did a quick welcome already. We did some introductions. Uh, uh, Craig's going to do some Power Platform updates. Uh, then my main presentation, the uh, admin in an hour, and I corrected the spelling of a special shot uh, piece over here. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting. Not many people believe this can be done in an hour. We'll going to see. All right. And the closing questions. Yes, whatever. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a uh, place to ask questions, and we will conclude at that point. Normally, that's where the food comes in, but that's okay. Um, let's virtual food for now. All right. Let's see. Going and again, off. just a reminder, you can uh, free to ask questions in the chat yes. or interrupt at any time. Okay, this was going to be more impressive when I was sharing my screen, but hit that Power Platform updates. The first thing we got are the Power uh, Automate Well, actually, updates. really quick, actually, we have a really uh, quick update. By the way, we also do the M365Chicago.com. We're organizers for that particular virtual event. We're going to have a – our next session is in – you're the first to hear it, folks. 
uh, January, what is it? Uh, 14th. Craig? 14th. Yes, will be so our we're going to update session. this slide with a, a different logo and update our websites. Um, yes. So interesting thing about that, we yeah. like new speakers. So if you ever thought about presenting at a conference, and it's virtual, so mm -hmm. um, you don't have to be like having 100 people look at you or anything while you're doing it. That's if you're right. interested in presenting the... Um, we will put I'll put on here in on our, our meetup the call for speakers, or if you just want to attend, um, it's going to be virtual again, just due to and due to everything that's going on in this world. But um, last time we had sixty what sixty four sessions. The time before that, which was a year ago, um, almost we had over a hundred sessions, a hundred speakers. So everything to do that we can fit into Microsoft three sixty five. Um, and we don't, since it's virtual, we try to fit out who, as many people as we can get in. So we haven't really ever rejected a speaker that I know of. Um, we will often only accept one session unless you're really, really have some really good ones that are doing. But so um, you don't have to submit like a dozen, but if you want to submit two or three, that's always a, a good thing to give us something to choose from. But we, uh, we use sessionize.com, by the way. If you guys haven't heard of that, sessionize.com, a great place to put in, as we say it, just at least your ideas for what you want to present. And every time there's like an event like ours that come up to say, hey, we need some speakers, you just do it automatically. Click, 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 and you don't have to do anything else special. Very nice. All right. Craig, take it away. Tell us about what's going on with Power Automate. Uh, oh, I just wanted to go back one last thing I was going to talk about. You don't have to go back to oh. the slide, but oh, I do? Um, per, the presenting um, can really help your career. I mean, it has oh. mine. It's it's allowed me to display some knowledge that I might have um, that some people think that I have. So um, it looks good on a resume and just getting to talk to other people, even if you're just attending and, and talking to the speakers, talking to the attendees um, really helps build your network base. And for me, it's kind of a hobby. So um, the whole user groups and stuff. So it's kind of where I can talk to people who, you know, my wife doesn't understand anything I do. So um, <laughs> And my, my 10 and 11 year old kids don't really understand that much of it either. So sometimes it's just nice to be able to talk to other people. Um, that's all I was going to throw in there. All right. Uh, well, speaking of which. So speaking of which power cloud or uh, power automate updates, we got two from the cloud. Um, so announcing code presence in power automate. So the ability to not only just work on an uh, create a power automate and work on it, but to have people help you with, um, sorry, Richard, I don't know if that's out in government cloud yet, um, but that just recently came out. So just a better way of collaborating and being able to like the other office tools so that you can get in like with Word and work with people or Excel. Um, we're looking to bring that to Power Automate. So that should be there. That's big, actually. You know, yeah, right now, huge. when we're trying to do anything with that, remember, you have to close the presentation. You can't have two people looking at it at the same time. Yeah, so that's awesome. Um, then the second one down is 15 independent publisher connectors. Um, so just some new connectors that were created by basically the field. Um, so the current they're created, developed, tested, published, and supported by contract developers. Um, and then they use independent end services for the API, but our team has certified them and say that they work. So you can use from them and the four that I picked out that I thought were pretty good. And I think there was actually five, but um, Discord, if you wanted to do anything with Discord, um, I think I pronounced that right. Or if you're into marketing, HubSpot, CMR, CRM, sorry, I can't read. CRM and CMS, and there was another one for HubSpot. So I think there was three connections from HubSpot um, that were done by Hitachi. And then uh, Jira Search was another one that I think people would oh, like big. because they know Jira? a lot of people oh, use man. Jira. Oh, yeah. Um, and then jumping away from the cloud, getting a new starter experience for Power Automate Desktop. So a little bit of a wizard walkthrough to introduce you to the platform and help you out there to make it easier to onboard. Um, and then an introduction uh, or introducing Invoke SOAP web service application. So the ability to um, make SOAP calls for a web service. So um, make it more convenient and easier to handle. So a little like kind of a wizard for that. And I think that that will help a lot of people want to do those kind of 
things. Um, all of those little lines in the presentation are clickable as well as they're in the notes of the presentation. So we will share the presentation um, out after this call. So if you're interested in any more of those, you can click on that. Um, just a reminder of that. And then as Ralph has pointed out numerous times, we're live streaming and recording this. So the recording will be available um, if you don't, now. can't stay for everything. <laughs> and Power Apps. Yes. So the what's new in Power Apps, um, that was going to be more impressive when I showed my screen, but that is a click on, <coughs> excuse me, to talk about our roadmap. So what should be rolling out through 20, October 2021 through March 2022. So what we call wave 2021 release wave two plan. Um, so some things like that that should be coming out are a simplified dataverse search, unified and modern Power Apps designer. So bringing in some of that. Yeah, there you go. Um, if you scroll down a little bit for, down there. Um, so that's the stuff that we're talking about. So if you're interested in what's on the roadmap and when that's going to be coming out, there was a link to it. Thank you, Ralph. Mm -hmm. uh, if you move back, um, generating power effects. Power effects. Power effects formulas from examples. So um, there you go there. So if you want to bring in some more formulas, um, just examples how to use those and some good things about that. Ralph, I know you could probably speak more about that than I can. Oh, yeah. I have yet to use it, but I assume that you've played with it. All right. Well, you know, again, a lot of the stuff that we do, if you recall, it's pretty much like we are in an Excel spreadsheet. We're doing our little bit of formulas and stuff. Well, it's a it's a language now. It's it's pretty much official that that's the language that they're calling it. And a lot of the things that the, a lot of the ways that we're trying to put it is by example. Remember, I said baby Skynet being able to say my uh, say the name properly over here. They're using AI to actually help do this stuff. This one. It, let's just say it's a rabbit hole. We don't want to get too into it right now because everyone's like, let's just look at that. I'm just going to let you let you be teased by this link and come and play. Maybe we'll talk about it in another session. So the next two um, are actually pretty cool things I just threw in there. They're recent blog um, from the product team, but generating, not sorry. Um, what do we got? H&M Group enables citizen developers at scale. So a case study, I always get asked, um, what is everybody else doing? How are they using Power Apps? Uh, so just that and Caterpillar, how they're using a fusion team to um, basically build mobile apps for the tap. There you go. Thanks, Ralph, um, for pulling those up. So some nice little case studies, how other people are doing it, how they're doing it at scale, because those are some pretty large corporations. Um, and then this one is just the updates from the Power Platform Development Tool. That just dropped as I was doing the slides. <laughs> so I have not really looked at too much of what that is, but I threw it in there. I, I mean, look, it's like dated today. It yeah, says so August like update. I said, it, it well, appeared as I was I, I got that. mixed up because it said August update. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Um, did I just go back in time? I, I think maybe they forgot to update the blog. You think? Maybe it's supposed to be September update, but yes, here they are, like the command line tool. Major, not too ma not as major as that sharing with the Power Automate. I don't think I, that to me that's huge. Yeah, and um, so what we need, so that's all for Power Apps and Power Automate. If anybody wants to help us out and join the M365 team and be a Power BI specialist, we don't have, we've never gotten that resource covered uh really? ralph so i will throw That's that true. out if you want to put your name in the chat if you don't want to, you know just get to to know me and ralph a little bit better which i know that's a scary part or would like to contribute <laughs> in some way shape or form or you have presentations about power bi but this group originally started out as power apps and power automate and then we threw the power platform on it but we've we've yet since since uh, Power I, BI is not I, one of I our I could main almost things. be the Power BI one because I'm loving it. I'm using it a lot. Uh, I do a lot of my integrations. Before I make a crazy big giant grid in, in Power Apps, I will sooner go do a Power BI and use that instead. And then, of course, I get everything else. So, you know, now you can do a Power BI inside of a, a Power App, of course, as an embed, and vice versa. A, po a Power App inside of a Power BI. 
Uh, and we'll actually so I'm just throwing about... it out there to build up the community and let other yes. people have opportunities to do oh, things. That's, we that need people who have time involved. to do it because I've run out of time. We run out of time. Yeah. So any any time, if anybody on this call wants to do a presentation about anything having to do with the Power Platform, you're more than free to reach out to us and let us know. If you would love to do the slides about Power BI updates on our weekly meetings, I would personally love you. <laughs> and I'll send you a Snickers bar or something. I don't know. Um, but with that being said, we have Ralph Rivas in his admin for admin an hour, an espresso shot of something to do with the power platform in the center. Yes. Of us. What does the COE stand for? I keep the calling COE it the center is, of excellence, but I know that's not it, what it is. It, it, actually, it is. It is it the is. center of excellence, sir. Well, what isn't the center of excellence also where we create like a, a SharePoint site that we tell everybody to go to, to get all the rules. <laughs> So, a little misnamed thing. The Center of Excellence, quote-unquote, starter kit. Again, it's not a kit anymore. It's a package. Uh, the Center of Excellence, the idea of that is that here's a tool to help you achieve your Center of Excellence. So, it's kept the name. They haven't changed it. Maybe Microsoft will change it one day. Maybe not. We shall see. But for now, that's what they call it, and we're going to look at that pretty soon. All right. So, here we go. Uh, we're going to get started over here. So basically, this is as of September. If you're watching this in the future, as of September 2021. So things may have changed. Uh, I hope you enjoy those new features out there. Thank you. And uh, Teams is not crashing for you, right? All right. We're telling the we're talking to the future folks. All right. Now I'll reintroduce myself over here properly uh, as part of the presentation. There's I actually have some links over here that you can actually make use of. Uh, of where, where I'm at, running, of course, helping run th this particular user group uh, and with the M365 Chicago. I actually have a another uh, video blog, uh, the cloudstalkshow.com site, uh, and every Friday is at around lunchtime, central time, uh, me and, and my, my old colleague, uh, Larry Smithmeyer, get together and talk about cloud topics because all of this comes from the cloud in, in one way, shape, or form, and sometimes we'll cover Power Platform stuff, but it's still cloud. All right. Uh, my focus, of course, is M365, essentially as a power user and developer. I am a power addict to date because uh, that's what I'm doing a lot of, especially in my current job. Uh, I was the original author of something called the Power Platform Licensing Guidance for the Community. They took it down. I would have given you a link otherwise because, well, and was this a good thing or a bad thing? It was a good thing because, technically speaking, Microsoft caught up with their documentation that they didn't need any more noise to be around. So I'm okay with that. Uh, as you can see, I'm a semi-mild-mannered architect by day, uh, well, or can hear, uh, and by night, and maybe you can see this too, uh, uh, a lot of these items over here, and uh, I have my producer over here who can attest to some of these items. Uh, this is uh, 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 Raquel version 2 over here, or Ra my, my other daughter, Raffine. I'm in mentor mode in that picture. All right, let's get going. Somehow we have to fit all this in an hour. So here's our agenda. Basically, we're going to talk about being an administrator because this is admin in an hour. So I'm going to focus really on the role. I'm going to take it a little bit of a different tack than showing you how to use the tools. It's more of, you know, what is it to be an admin? What would you be doing? And uh, if you're not an admin now, it's good to know what the admin would be doing so you know how to, say, relate with them. Uh, you know how to sympathize with them and maybe what goodies to give them because they're going to be your best, best friends. Or at the very least, when you're hiring someone and you want to bring someone in to be your admin, you pretty much have an idea what that is. Okay, uh, key responsibilities of what that person does, the relevant admin roles in M365 that have to be in there, what an admin should be doing. It's probably a good idea to know what is it an admin really does. You probably Some of you might have an idea of what an admin does. Maybe this might blow your mind on what they maybe should or should not be doing. Uh, some guidance, of course. We'll look at the tools very quickly, and that's why the COE is involved over here. Uh, a little bit of next steps, which you can do afterwards, and an ask me anything at the end, including licensing questions, and I'm putting myself out there to actually do that. All right. Uh, here's the motivation. Why are we doing all this? Basically, this is, it's, this is a beautiful slide from Microsoft. I like this one. Uh, what's happening, all these new apps being built in the next five years, the demand for the mobile apps, uh, the demand to find the talent, and, and we're basically looking at structured data. The kind of low-code momentum that's out there is humongous, and I'm not kidding. I'm actually seeing this at a scale now. I, I used to see it like a little bit here, a little bit there, and then all of a sudden I changed jobs, and I went to a place where like I'm seeing it at scale, and I can imagine the Microsoft pro folks probably see a bigger picture than that, but 
anyways, that's our motivation. There's a lot of work. There's a lot of, uh, as they say, we like to be there. So for those who are new to for the plat Power Platform or for, even for the folks that have been around a while, the latest version of the overarching view of everything Power Platform. Yes, Power BI is equally a, a Power Platform item. That's part of this, even though it may not be up here in the admin so much over here, but we'll talk about that. Power Apps, of course, Power Automate, we've heard of Power Virtual Agents, newer on the scene. Uh, and of course, underneath it all, the core, the core things that support it, the data connectors, uh, portals, which has been quiet for a while. Not many people talked about portals until that big uh, security uh, kerfuffle, but it's actually a very important piece of the product. Um, the AI builder pieces uh, for uh, essentially where baby Skynet is doing her job. Uh, and of course, a uh, Dataverse. All right, Dataverse is, uh, uh, remember all of this stuff comes from Dynamics. So at, uh, underneath the cover, we don't say Dynamics over here. The, the, and maybe like the, the hidden elephant behind it all would be, or that big turtle that's holding up the world would be Dynamics. All right, let's continue really quick. So we got through those intros. What does it mean to be a power platform administrator? We, let's, let's ask a question. All right, uh, are you the only administrator? So if you're coming here, it's like, are you the only one? Or is there a team? And actually, this is important. If you're in a situation where like you are the only administrator and your organization is maybe a significant size or actually a significant business that's concerned about making money, not losing money and everything else, uh, it makes a difference. So the first tip, uh, there's gonna be a bunch of tips that come through over here. The first one is don't fly solo if you can help it. Uh, when, as you can start going through this, you'll see that admin roles uh, have a lot of things that can be done. So. Uh, you're going to want to consider the administrator. When I talk about the admin and I talk about you as the admin, and I could be meaning actually you, the team of administrators, right? So Microsoft actually has it defined. Microsoft Power Platform admin team by their definition, and there's a link to it to be just to know that I didn't make this up. Uh, essentially, they're responsible for establishing the environment strategy. Sorry, you muted yourself. <laughs> no, you're on mute. Ralph Teams shows you his. Am I, do I have my sound back? Yes. How long have I been on mute? <laughs> That's For a fine. while? Yeah. Yep. So I've been going through slides and it's been quiet all this time? No, they're just this slide. Oh, just this slide? Okay. So right here. It's very interesting. It must be, hmm, okay. Teams, funny. Let me, let me put my equipment right in the right area over here. All right. Uh, repeating, okay, uh, Microsoft's uh, definition of the, uh, of the uh, thank you very much, uh, for the Power Platform admin team, what they have to do. So we're going to actually cover all these items over here and, you know, just basically remember your team is going to be out there. This is all about the team. Uh, and, yep, there is a me and team when you put the M and the E together, but, nope, it's still a team. Uh, so, so first question people say, might ask, how many people should be in the admin team? So there's a rule of admins for M365 in general that I like to put out. Basically, an admin needs to have at least one backup, and I'll call this a set. So an admin set are two people, essentially uh, uh, one person and their backup. So there could be several sets of, of administrators. So best practice is an admin set for each key role. So we'll talk about the different roles later. Um, if, if one person is really in charge of so many things, that's your critical, that's your, 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 your choke point. That person not being available for whatever reason basically stops the world. All right, two man admins, however, are bad. 20 global admins defeats the purpose. It undermines the role. If you have all these admins, everyone's touching and has the ability to do something. Maybe you put out something you're hoping for an approval. And like, I have 20 admins, so at least one of them might approve something. Well, what if all 20 admins do not approve it because they're all expecting one of the other admins to go? This is an example of the case of too many admins. There can be too many admins. You don't want too little, but you definitely want, don't want too many. And of course, more places for things to go wrong and break. 
Uh, the workload essentially ultimately decides how many you need. You're a giant corporation. You're 5,000, 10,000, 50,000 big. Obviously, you'll need admins to scale for that. Um, but if you're not that big, uh, at least think of the, 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 the pair of the admins at, to start off. All right. Uh, cross admin roles are okay. Again, the same thing. Like I said, maybe the admin could be uh, the uh, SharePoint uh, admin is also the Power Platform admin. That might be okay. But think about again the workload. A lot of SharePoint questions get in the way of trying to help Power Platform because that could take a lot of work. All right. Uh, so let's take a look at these roles and responsibilities over here. I just want to look at the big picture now of the other uh, people, the other teams that are out there. They, uh, Microsoft calls for the low-code strategy team, and this just gives you an idea on what they're doing. They're driving innovation. They're doing business value adoption and everything else. Here's, of course, our, our t uh, stuff that we're talking about, the Power Platform admin team handling all these main areas, and we'll go that, through that in detail. Uh, there's uh, the, the concept of a nurture team when you want to uh, make things happen. Now, not everyone will have that. Maybe they, the system is so controlled that only a small group of people will be in charge of actually doing the work, but this is another team that would be out there. Um, a good, it's good that all these teams be aware of each other naturally. Uh, and then, of course, they have the, uh, the, the reusable, the folks for doing things reuse in, in a reusable fashion. We'll show where those tools are. And yes, that would be another theme. And then finally, user support itself. All right. Even though you saw it, it said manage users. Remember that? And then, yes, but there could be a user support team uh, that's specifically for handling uh, the pieces. Again, depending on the size of your organization. But you want to be aware when there's other teams. Let's take a look at the Power Platform Administration team. Two things that they do, keep us safe and handle capacity and licensing control. For keeping us safe, managing that data loss protection for the Power Platform, it's not the same as data loss protection in security. But that would that would be what they're managing. We'll look at that a little bit later, more, some more later. Uh, watching for anom anomalous activity, basically another set of eyes. They're not the security people necessarily, but because they're looking at the admin screens and other things that are out there, uh, as I say, you see something, say something. There are another set of uh, eyes to take a look at that. So, yeah, what about that security? And although the Power Platform administrators can directly change things, and they can in some cases, the ultimate responsibility, and I'm already throwing this out there, is security admins are truly the people that should be out there. If the Power Platform person is also the security person, eh, that's a heavy load and a heavy responsibility. It's best that they be separate, best. But if you have no choice, just think about it. All right. Uh, other things, on the, uh, the other ones on the capacity and license control are more straightforward, the managing capacity, again, just through monitoring and seeing what's out there. Uh, the licensing management, basically, it's uh, uh, crossing over general uh, M365-10 administration. You don't, it doesn't happen at the Power Platform level. Uh, it happens, actually, we'll talk about that a little bit more later, somewhere else. And then, of course, the question is, is there self-service or not with your Power Apps? All right, uh, this question, if you're going to think about administration, you, this question better be answered like immediately. Uh, uh, are you going to allow people to just uh, stumble upon work and do whatever they want using the self-service tools that are that are out there, or are you going to closely monitor it? This is going to set the tone for how and, and what you're going to do for administration. Um, and oh, by the way, so there's a script to update this policy, a uh, really quick tip, which we're going to include in the match. And there is the script. Uh, you can go ahead and take a picture of that or rewind to take a picture. And yes, that script will control that particular policy. All right. Other responsibilities, uh, the, the guardrails. They mentioned guardrails. Essentially, the only pos it's only possible with active monitoring. So uh, the, the other set of eyes, you are the guardrails to watch. And it's mostly about communicating best practices and general operations. Hey, I see that you're creating five test apps. Maybe you shouldn't be creating five test apps. As an administrator, you'll probably see that, and you it's up to you to decide to communicate it or not. Uh, data integration migration guideline, guidelines. Basically, when you're bringing in uh, data or when you're moving things around, this is like you're an advisory role for this because data that's coming from outside of Dataverse, because Dataverse you have control of to some extent, uh, if they're coming from SharePoint, uh, OneDrive, or if they're coming from wherever, these are things that you would be concerned about, at least as, as far as things going in. You would tell them, look, if you're going to make this come into Power Platform, here are the rules. Here's what needs to happen. Uh, migration, of course, is an event that's not a day-to-day -day occurrence, naturally. Uh, you just I'm just putting it over here because it could happen. Someone says, we're moving from here to here. You as an admin might be brought in to do that work. 
Let's look at the M365 roles in the Power Platform Administration team. So that power there, – there's, and if you remember seeing the roles in uh, setting up users or if you're not sure where that is, let an M365 administrator show you where that is. The Power Platform Admin is the core role that you must have. It's fundamental. Any kind of plat uh, Power Platform task that you need to be an admin for, you need to have this role. If you want someone to do that with you, they need to have that role. Uh, oh, what about that Dynamics 365 admin? Well, this is not optional if you're using uh, Dynamics 365, of course. Uh, and by the way, so here's the thing. The Dynamics 365 admin, it sort of crosses over the Power Platform admin. So there's some power to override uh, what's going on over here. So uh, here's the thing. If it's a different person actually out there, you need detente. You need an understanding of what they're doing. Those two folks have to get together and be best friends or at least agree not to step on each other's toes when they're working on, uh, on whatever it needs to work on. Again, because the things cross over. All right, uh, other admin roles. So do we, here's a good question. Do we need the power of global admin, global reader? How about Teams administrator, SharePoint administrator? We talked about it. So the best practice, again, best that those are separate folks. All right, uh, that's the best practice. We know there's going to be crossover, that the way of things in life, but keep it in mind uh, uh, what I mentioned earlier. The typical practice, again, is for a power platform, typically are, are also – working with SharePoint and Teams, mainly because those are the two areas where you see Power Platform items, everything from reports to automation to uh, every, uh, I mean, apps tend to happen there, tend to, right? Not always, but they tend to happen there. So that's a typical practice. The global reader is an interesting uh, role because that is highly recommended. And anyway, if you're going to be working with the COE, you're going to, you're going to need it if you're going to want to have the power for that. Otherwise, you need to work with someone who has that power to read things outside of uh, just the power platform. All right, the admin role, the user admin role. This is an interesting one because this is potentially part of the work. Again, we recommend it be separate, but sometimes as a user admin would be the case of uh, fixing a password uh, or fixing permissions or putting them into a user, into a group so they have permissions for something. Uh, be careful with those. If you're doing it, you've got to watch that distinction between the actual user admin. Uh, the guidance talk document there so talks about managed users. You saw that earlier. Uh, of course, <laughs> that was. It seems like that was mentioned without that new. Not mentioning that. Hey, by the way, there are nuances. Managing users as an M365 admin is not exactly the same as managing users as a Power Platform. So, something to to to, uh, to look at. Uh, if licensing control is part of the work, they tell you, hey, you have to manage the license. You need to have that admin uh, user admin uh, power because that's the only place where you can actually assign and remove licenses, all right? So, hey, that's the big one from the takeaway from that slide. Um, best, of course, to uh, if you want to, uh, if you're belonging to what's called a compliance management role group, we'll talk about that. This is one of the things that's good, and this is mainly for that COE piece that we're looking at over here. We'll look at that a little bit more. All right, let's take a breath here, and let's look at what an admin should be doing. If you're an admin, you should be part of planning, all right? Uh, and uh, you want to plan those environments that are out there. If you're not sure what environments, we'll look at that in a little bit. You should be part of planning uh, capacity. You want to know what's going on. You can't be blindsided by capacity issues. The governance, well, for heaven's sakes, if you're the admin, this is your probably the biggest thing that you should really be part of, the governance of anything that happens in the Power Platform at least, and in the bigger picture governance. Uh, you're going to be at least monitoring license. If you're not assigning or controlling them, you need to monitor them to see where they're going on because that basically helps a lot. You can manage them. That's semi-optional, but managing them at least, again, if you're not the one actually doing it, just being the person in charge to say, yes, you have a license. No, you can't have it. That sort of thing is a good idea. The DLP policies in the environment. Now, that's a pretty much an expected, a given. If you're handling the environments and you're doing that work, you should be part of the planning, of, especially of that, and of the management of those pieces. All right, again, just note, this is not the same as if, if folks are familiar with M365. There are secu security and compliance over there. This is not the same as what happens over there. Totally different. Those are different kinds of policies. We'll, we can actually have a whole session on doing that specifically, but I'll show you the tools that will help you in that regard. Well, we need to monitor capacity. We talked about capacity as far as the planning, and you need to monitor it afterwards. Things like API uh, activity, usage, things like that are the things that you'd be expected to monitor. The dataverse space, you'd be expected to monitor from that, ever, that area. Uh, even the Dynamics 365 admin 
will perhaps be able to see their own space, but this is really uh, in the Power Platform admin the biggest thing that they'll be able to see. And of course, capacity and existence of all the various environment types or different kinds of environments you want to be very familiar and basically be the one to handle and work through those. Uh, we talked about monitoring a lot, and uh, this is my favorite uh, saying, in God we trust all others, we monitor. Essentially, the, the key to being an admin in Power Platform is actually monitoring and looking at what's going on and doing stuff and basically keeping that information, being intelligent, maybe not in an enabled sense, but that's what gives you the intelligence to be able to do your job. All right. Uh, hey, part two of what an, apart, uh, an admin should do. Uh, you will be working with the tenant administrators, the M365 tenant administrators, on things like cross-tenant isolation. Uh, here's a bit of a link, and we'll put that up there. Cross-tenant restrictions. So if you're going from uh, one tenant to another, there could be restrictions that keep people from, especially in organizations where there's multiple tenants, there is things that need to be done or need to be worked on. You would be working with them to make sure that that's set up early. Uh, Active Directory conditional access. This is another major thing. When you have things coming in from the outside, you need to work with the tenants, uh, administrators, to make sure that that's set up. If you don't know that this is going on, not a good thing. So if you are suddenly an admin, that's your role, you may want to find out. All right, there's more items in the COE. We'll cover those later. Essentially, these are things that once these two are done, it's a good thing about that is once they're done, they should be done unless uh, – change of the world of events or whatever organizational events will bring them uh, back. All right, tracking user access. Uh, there's a way to enable this ability in PowerShell. And PowerShell, by the way, a major tool. Here's a quick, if you have the power of PowerShell and you're the administrator, the power at uh, the uh, M365 administrator, this is what they have to turn on. There's the script. They want to basically turn on that ability to track user access. All right. Um, and of course, uh, to get the right access, of course, they can just give you the access. The administrator can run this little shell and say, hey, remember that compliance management uh, role that we talked about? They can add you to this list, and you can show this to your tenant administrator say, hey, here's a PowerShell script. Run this, put my name in it, and I'll be fine. Thank you. Put that in the service ticket. All right. What should an admin do? Finally, last thing to look at. Uh, of course, more monitoring. <laughs> Did I say monitoring? Yes, you're going to monitor apps. Flows, connectors, sharing. I say, oh my God, well, my gosh, it's a lot of this stuff. How many more things do we have to monitor? Well, the COE, we're going to talk about this later, is where that comes in. And fortunately, it's not as bad as it looks. Uh, so we're going to, of course, monitor all the reports. That's naturally true. We're going to report in the reports because what's the point of a report if no one looks at it? If a report is printed in the woods, will anyone hear it fall? But this is the thing monitoring is not just is not the end all. You could monitor, but if you don't say anything, nothing happens to it. If you have reports and no one's looking at it, really, there's really no point to it. You want to be, you want to really follow up. If your your boss is like that, you're sending reports to is just like blowing you off. Uh, that's a red flag. You may want to address it some way, shape, or form, because uh, it will hurt later. And of course, finally, I think this is good for any job. Document your work as an administrator. This is probably your biggest saving grace because documentation saves. Yes, believe it. This is very religious. Documentation saves. All right. Another breath as we look at some guidance. How are we doing on time over here? Hey, we're actually doing great. Uh, some guidance on the Power Platform. Let's look a little bit. So let's look at some concepts for uh, the job. All right. Uh, dealing with costs. All right, so license management is the first concept. Uh, go premium or go home. So managing those connectors, managing the premium or just the standard connectors that are out there, uh, essentially knowing what's what people can use and what will turn something into a license cost. The bottom, the bottom line is if it's a premium, whatever, premium basically means money. Something is going to happen. Something is going to cost. So you want to basically keep, uh, uh, keep a close track of what's happening over there. And if not, if they're not allowed to use it, tell them, Shh, sorry, they can go home. The other thing that you want to uh, to know as an administrator and you want to understand is the concept of the per app per user, per user, or maybe the workloads of the actual people that are using these applications or these flows or everything else. And what, they're, what are the levers that say, okay, if I'm going to get that per app license per user, 
at what point do I'm, am I going to have to pay more or how many of these can I get before I'm out of capacity, everything else? You, these are things that you'll probably want to learn more about and understand. But the concept over here is that uh, – the basic concept, especially with apps, per app per user, that's one app. You got a user, especially after October 1st. After that, it's like you do four apps. You still can uh, – you, you, now you have to pay what's called the per user unlimited. After that, it's unlimited. Okay, so a very important thing to keep keep track of. Once a person has unlimited, here's a very important concept. Once a person has the access to the unlimited apps, that pretty much opens the door to use as much as they can. So you get ROI when you make more apps. Uh, speaking of unlimited apps, so the concept of unlimited apps and flows. This is these are tenant level strategies and tactics that you would want to understand. Uh, to be a, a good admin on this. When you're trying to explain to especially users who are asking, should I get the per app or should we get the unlimited app? Should this run on a service account where everyone can run this flow or app? These are things that you, these are decisions that you'd have to make. So these are concepts that you have to understand and basically for handling costs. All right. Uh, uh, the Power Automate, of course, Power Automate has some licensing nuances because they have the concept of the creator of the, of the flow for example, uh, an, versus an organization owner. So the creator of the flow, I create a flow, I have a license. That means I can use that flow as many times as I want forever, or I can make as many flows as I want because I'm a creator. I paid the license. I can make as many flows as I want. But if the moment somebody else uses my flow, poof, that's it. They have to get that their own license for that. But I, there could be an organizational owner. The concept of that I, I can buy in bulk, maybe for five flows all right, that can be run by everybody anywhere to whatever capacity they can run it. That's an important concept. Versus like, oh well, this flow is running off a trigger. Well, there's no con there's no there's no cost because the trigger, whatever's triggering it, is already paying the bill. You want to understand that nuance. Uh, the other ones, of course, the other nuances to understand is the power portals and dataverse nuances. Yes. In those particular cases, those are straightforward. You're buying capacity. So when you're using Dataverse to a, uh, an extent or the portal to an extent, you're concerned about capacity. How many people can log on to the portal? How much space do you need to keep stuff? How much uh, uh, ability you can to make API calls back and forth to Dataverse? Those are the, the, the concepts that you want to really be, uh, be in. Uh, uh, got Teams? Hey, that's coming up. We'll talk about Teams a little bit. All right. Core concept number two, governance. Remember I said governance is pretty much the most uh, biggest piece. Environment management is the big one, all right? Environment management includes security and that DLP or the data loss protection context. Uh, you're basically, you have, you're creating environments uh, management by organization. So you could have an environment for uh, group A, environment for HR, environment for sales, or environment for just, just pick an organization unit. That could be an environment. But of course, there's uh, what's called uh, environments for uh, the development process, ALM. We'll, we'll talk about what that is later. But the concept of a dev, prod, uh, testing, those kind of things, yet another environment. That you are going to be the one to have to understand things in all those three concepts. So yeah, the ALM is literally its own session, but we'll, we'll talk about that just a little. Uh, some key facts that I'm just adding to the slides over here about environments. We're not going to go and linger here too long. I'm just including it for the slide deck for you to be able to read la later and just showing you what you can do with environments, how they work, and how they how they happen. Just really quick, let's continue here with concepts. Uh, so applications and solutions management. This is part one of this. Basically knowing where apps and solutions live. So the environment types. So you need to understand the environment types. Uh, the dev plan, which anybody can seem to get. Uh, trials, which some people can just do or not do. The concept of the difference between a sandbox or just to do a, a production environment. You need to understand these concepts. Uh, the access to these types, you need to, uh, to at least know what's going on there. For example, trials can be blocked. Nobody can, you can set it up where no one's allowed to have a trial. So that controls it. And why would you want to control that? It's because capacity could be used. And of course, the fact that there's, uh, let's just say, uncontrolled development going on somewhere, that might be an issue. So these are things that you need to understand uh, for concepts. The team's difference. So this is a very important thing. We talked about teams being a nuance. Basically, the team's uh, way of handling solutions, it's a different process. It's, it's all in the same place. It's just dealt with differently. So it's important to understand how teams does it versus doing it, say, in your regular admin screens. 
uh, how are things published and shared? So this is actually important. Some of the things that you must understand uh, that is you need to understand how best to communicate change and the fact that you have to communicate change because if you don't, things get messy. All right, you could say, well, it's irresponsible for the ability of the user to make sure that change gets communicated. Well, that could be the case, but ultimately it should be on the administrator to ensure that that process is followed if that's the process. And the key of here, of course, is knowing what is changing. The COE will help you there, but as an administrator, your best your best power is knowing knowing it all, right? And knowing what's changing is pretty much what's going to save you going forward. Uh, it's a, there's a sharing culture that's out there potentially. However, you're doing that, a sharing. If you apply your sharing culture, are, is it sharing is caring? Are you doing like uh, okay, only these people get it. I'm under full control with that. That whatever culture is going to be at your organization, that's got to be applied. That'll be up to you to be part of that that effort. Okay, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, let's continue on governance part two of this. The concept of the ALM, I call it, it was Application Lifecycle Management or DevOps, Developer Operations. Here's the thing, and uh, this is not exactly you, but you are essentially, as an administrator, the stakeholder. You need to be aware, if this is going on, how it's going on, you need to be aware. You may not be the technical person necessarily to know the details of pipelines or any of that. The key is, though, you are, technically speaking, a stakeholder. And if you're not, uh, it's time to lobby. Uh, all right, uh, you need to understand it. In this case, there are defined roles, all right? Uh, you don't want to be, again, that person maybe doing all that work because that's going to be tough. Because defined roles are very important to the concept of DevOps and ALM, uh, that will be introduced. Those are additional roles in addition to like M365 roles. Those are just process roles that you want to be aware of. All right, and of course, what do we keep saying? Communications and process. Uh, as the admin, you have to be on top of those pieces one way or the other. Uh, meanwhile, on the side of security and compliance, the first tip, you want to address those user management responsibilities early because if you find out later what, I'm supposed to help this guy with his password also, you don't want to find that out later. Find that out now. You want to get those out of the way. And uh, my, my other quick tip is here. Basically, you want to get past defaults. And remember, everything is in is our defaults. When you default, you default. When you leave everything in the defaults is the one tip that I can give right over there. Uh, the second tip, I should say, uh, when in the case of security and compliance, you as the power platform administrator want to work with the security team, the compliance team, and make sure that you're aligned with how that stuff works. If they don't understand how your stuff works, you show them. If you don't understand how their stuff works, let them show you. Believe it or not, you'll have you'll become friends. All right. More governance. Let's look at the nuances over here. So first one we talked about earlier, the Dynamics 365. It's separate but equal. All right, there's again, there should be that understanding between the admins if these roles are separate. It's that's a very straightforward one, but it is a nuance. The way they do administration there, the screens that they have are different. <clears throat> and let's just say they're not in a hurry to bring them together because let's just say Dynamics 365 administrators have a thing going and they're fine. Please do not move my cheese. And yes, <laughs> well, let's respect that, right? So in the meantime, let's these two work together. All right, uh, dealing with portals. Those uh, the portals, what are portals? <clears throat> these are websites. Portals are not applications. They're not the same as applications or anything else. They just make things happen. Uh-oh. I'm going so fast. I am ready for my Americano. Here we go. So if you're going to be an administrator for uh, dealing with portals, if you think like a web administrator, you will be just fine as a portal administrator. Or for that matter, at least be fine with working with the portal administrators or the people that are actually uh, tasked to be in that role of dealing with a specific portal. But think with, if you think like that and think about the, the issues that they go through and have to work with, pretty much the same thing. All right, uh, dealing with RPA or a remote processing and flow, the robots and stuff like that, uh, there is special licensing and capacity, all right, that should be part of uh, your governance piece. You want to understand those. If they're in play, if you're doing things like, um, especially like RPA, even if it's simple, I did a Power Automate desktop, and I'm going to run it, and I'm going to automate it, make it happen. Uh, these are things that can get quickly out of hand, and suddenly everyone, no one knows what happened, how it works, or anything else. You want to understand dealing with those early. Uh, the, the 
course, the best tool in management, the COE, again, coming up. We're going to talk about it. Dataverse is a nuance uh, because here's the thing. There's the concept of the tenant total capacity versus those so-called capacity limits on the licenses. So you'll get a license for a user. It says, hey, I get 400 megabytes of Dataverse space. Great. I have 200 users getting 400 megabytes. Oh, I got 2,000 users getting 400 megabytes. Bam. Wait a minute. That's not going to happen because the total capacity in a tenant is only 10 gigabytes. And now we have to buy capacity. So there's a, an important thing on the governance, a little bit on the costs over there too. Please understand how that works, that you have to keep track, not just of the licenses that are out there, but this is why you have to keep track of licenses because you have to know what potentially could be the damage against the total capacity. So if I have 10,000 users that are per user per app and have 400 licenses, uh, 400 megabytes each of Dataverse space, and even though they might be using 80 bits right now, that's potentially what my hit could be if all of a sudden all of them got religion and started using Dataverse to its max. All right, more, uh, more on uh, nuances, part two. Uh, things to understand. Gateways, what are gateways? These are basically the concept of the connections to the outside. And the outside essentially is anything external to M365. Essentially, I'm connecting to my on-premises SQL server. I'm connecting to that Azure uh, in that tenant over there. I'm connecting to some other system somewhere else. Y the gateway controls are actually in the Power Platform admin. So you need to understand how those works because that's, they're going to come to you to actually make those happen. So you need to understand how those works. Uh, things like Azure registrations, because there are some special connectors or apps that will require this, and the only way to deal with them is in the Azure portal administration. As a Power Platform administrator, you might be able to see this, but you may not be able to touch it. So if you're going to be playing with this, you're going to need to have access or be friends with the folks that do. All right. Um, basically, you have to be that type of admin or be, like I said, or be in good terms with the, the one who is. But this will happen. The COE itself implementing it will bring you here. All right. And meanwhile, there's Teams, of course. Uh, first concept, just because it's free doesn't mean that it is, of course. The, here's the a, a thing about Teams. Teams feels free because they're, it's the gateway drug. The most obvious, Dataverse is only two gigabytes max. Uh, the API capacity is limited. I mean, really limited, like the dev plan, which means if you're trying to do things at high volume, you can't do it in Teams, which is why the COE doesn't work very well in Teams. All right. Uh, and, of course, there are some nuances in the management. Getting used to those, it's probably a good idea as an administrator to play around with both. And don't say, hey, I'm used to using my own. I don't feel like using Teams. Eh, no, not a good one. All right. Take a breath. How are we doing on time? We're almost there. We're actually doing well. Let's look at these admin tools. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. You have a, do we have questions or anything like lying out there? Maybe now is the time before we start. I saw one that says, do these admin monitoring apps also apply to Azure Logic apps? Ah, so they do not. That is a very good question. Azure Logic apps Azure, uh, exist in the Azure space. So those monitoring tools do not look at that. Uh, in, there are tools in, in Azure itself that do the monitoring. And so consider that those tools would be on the side looking at them, but keep them on there where they belong in Azure at the moment. If you're the Power Platform person also responsible for Azure <laughs> apps, get a raise right away because that's a lot of work to have to have the two screens side by side. Good question. All right, uh, I shall proceed. Let's look at some of these tools. That's it. All right. So uh, we're not going to go through all of them in, in too much detail because some of you have might have seen these already. If you have your own dev tenant, definitely go play. But uh, in the main admin centers, the key to those main admin centers really is all about analytics. When we open them up and look inside of them, there's almost like nothing there to do but analyze and look at the analytics. Right? There are some things you can do. There's gateway controls. There are the environment controls. You can create environments. You can manage capacity and all this stuff. But it's not quite the same as the amount of analytics they're giving you. And here's the cool thing. Microsoft is, is constantly adding to this group. So stuff that might have been maybe in the COE at one time uh, will find its way here. So this at this site we can say uh, with certainty because these, these analytics, like when they came out two years ago, are were like very – plain compared to what we have if you go visit them yeah. now. Uh, so uh, there's basically Power Apps has analytics, Dataverse, of course, you can look at, and of course, Power Automate. Uh, 
Power BI also has similar into Power BI admin screens as well. I don't have Power BI over here, but Power BI does have the same thing. Uh, the only one that doesn't have it over here is Power Automate. Is not uh, Power Automate, Power uh, Virtual Agent, pardon me, is not on these screens. Fortunately, it's in the COE, and we're probably going to see something at some point over there. All right, uh, some other tools that you'll be using. The Office Activity Logs. Again, you have to be at the the role to be able to see some of these things. But these are these are tools that are really part of the part of the admin set, right? Uh, for at protection.office.com is where a lot of these things can be can be looked at and viewed. All right, where the audit records are stored, uh, things that must be uh, enabled at the organization level. Just having having access to this as an administrator. If at least in a read sense, will at least help you look at it. Otherwise, you're going to need to have those folks in your team, the Power Platform Administration team, to have this power to deal with it. Other things, uh, basically, let's leverage uh, PowerShell. I, we did mention PowerShell left and right. Those, and, and we have PowerShell and connectors. So just like the same dog food, and uh, oddly enough, that the makers are using to do all the kind of work, there's actually connectors and power auto for Power Automate and for everything else for the admins to actually use. The COE is a good place where a lot of this is happening. But as an administrator, if you're cooking up your own uh, screens and cooking up your own works, all of this is available to you via PowerShell for scripting or via the connectors for actually using. So a lot of power that's over here. Uh, you may want to get this slide. There's some links over here that take you for some of these places. These are for the folks that really want to get into it. You don't have to do any of this. You, don't, you can be like the administrator that uses the tools that are out of box. That's fine. But if you really need to take it further, or especially if you have a developer team that's doing that developer operations and DevOps stuff further, these are the tools that they will be using. All right. And, of course, the biggest beast out there, and it's called a kit. Hey, it's no kit. Uh, it's like the kitty cat is a tiger, basically. Uh, the Center of Excellence Starter Kit. Uh, the Center of Excellence Starter Kit, the reason why not many people can use it is because it needs premium licenses to actually run it. But seriously, if you're a serious organization, again, you're making money, you want to keep track of it, um, and maybe you're more than a few people in the organization, this is almost like table stakes because this actually has a whole bunch of pieces that give you visibility that you would otherwise have to build or have to put together yourself. Right, so they have admin center capabilities. Again, it uses those connectors and everything else to make it happen. There are some templates, and by the way, that's Power BI over there. It's using Power BI, and that's actually a really cool Power BI template. You can go and reuse it for other things. It has a lot of cool things in there. We'll we'll look at some of these. Uh, let's. Uh, what's the center of excellence put together? Made up. All right, basically a bunch of solutions. All right, uh, and and we have the core solutions over here, which we'll actually go ahead and review. And one of the biggest piece of that core solution is that Power BI screen. But there's also some apps and a whole bunch of flows and everything else. The same thing. Uh, there's an, there's another aspect of it, uh, the governance components. This is for audit reporting. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things here that we can see. There's even a, there's even an app called the Developer Compliance Center that helps you uh, uh, take a look and see what's what's out there. Just saying, we're going to go through some of these in a little bit uh, more detail. And then they have the concept of the nurture. Yes, yes, if we're going to if we're going to govern them, we're going to nurture them. Well, actually, when we say nurture, we're not nurturing the organization. We're nurturing uh, the people or a lot of the other people that are going to be creating apps and doing a lot of the work. There's a whole bunch of components over here that if you're the administrator, whether or not you expect that to be building apps yourself. Maybe you're not going to be building apps. If you're an administrator, you will at least be dealing with the folks who will be building. And when the COE is involved, there is this concept of making it, making more, right? Basically growing that community. So there's a lot of components that help the administrator manage that, that stuff. Uh, some of the audit log components over here is mostly uh, in particular flows, but it's mostly the, the dashboard sense to take a look at. All right. Uh, the admin view, and just a, basically it's just an overall view of resources in the tenant. The, you can now remember we talked about we got a monitor. We can see the apps, we can see the flows, the environments, including the number of apps, 
the flows per environment. Look at all the makers. Ident you can identify champions. How do you identify champions? Hey, there's this user, user uh, Bob. Bob the user is like, he's got 100 apps. Well, he must be a champion because he's got 100 apps. Maybe he can help us. Say, oh, no, Bob doesn't come out of his basement. It doesn't, it's okay. He can stay there. We'll make him a champion. Uh, we can monitor, again, resource creation, these things that you can look at in the dashboard. It's very powerful. It may, again, oh, let me make a quick note about this. It's not real time. These are flows that have to run because these, in a large organization, it would be very, very nasty to have to keep track of a lot of this stuff uh, in real time. But at least within 24 hours, you happen to know that something has happened. Eh, not so bad. But there are some things that will help too. All right. Uh, and, of course, this will help you essentially drive your governance policies through. There's a business compl uh, a, a compliance business process flow that's included. If you enable it, you can actually control through that. You don't have to use it. You can make your own, but that's one of the things that are out there. Uh, that DLP policy, we talked about uh, handling DLP. Now, there is a DLP editor of sorts that's in the Power Platform regular admin screens it's themselves. But the editor right now is more powerful. Maybe at one time the, the two will come together. But it comes with an app to actually uh, that actually takes care of it. Because here, this one says, I see the impact of a policy. In other words, I'm going to now uh, make a policy where no one can use Twitter. And all of a sudden, when I hit the uh, the button on this particular app, it tells me, hey, all of these apps and flows are going to break because you decided to take away Twitter. That does not happen on the other on the regular admin screen, right? Other things, are, well, basically there's a customizer, so it's basically PowerShell and everything else, but you can you can customize the piece over here. No need to go through that one into more detail. Uh, connector usage, pretty much we were talking about that earlier, keeping track of the connectors, how they're how they're going out, on out there. Uh, it's a good idea to see where most of that usage is occurring, especially if there's premium connectors in use. That could give you an idea on trends, or at least uh, you find things that maybe should be turned off because they're just out there and costing you money. All right, of course, looking at the application themselves, everything from trends, you identify the apps. Oh, sharing is usually one of the biggest things. Almost the, the number one question says, we want to know who's sharing what, because for heaven's sakes, people are sharing and, you know, they're not caring. It's like, okay, wanting to know how people share. People are always saying, who's sharing my documents, everything else. This is pretty much a very popular screen, especially for what I do. Uh, here's a good one, uh, setting a new app owner. Remember I said that uh, that the user management happens at a certain level? Well, something like an app, an owner of an application is something that really belongs to the Power Platform admin, right? So uh, somebody left the company. Oh, I need to make a new owner for them. Let's do it from here instead of a PowerShell or worse, having to go fight it in the app and try to make it work. So here's a developer compliance center if you decide to enable it. Again, it's just for uh, app auditing. Uh, it's just another tool that can be used for compliance, like a little bit of a traffic light system that shows uh, here's an app. It's red or yellow or status. Little uh, little tools, again, to help in the process. Uh, there's It comes with a flow. Right, so a little bit of flow. It sends emails out, gives you details, asks questions, bugs uh, bugs the users, for example. Nice, and of course, uh, business process flow for the auditing process itself. Again, validating uh, the maker requirements. So things like somebody created an app, and then they get a little email. Hey, I see you made an app. You know, this is like Clippy, uh, Clippy on uh, uh, who is this? Um, Clippy, the uh, the prison guard, said, uh, Hey, I, I see you just made an app. Can you tell me why? <laughs> tell me why you like this app. What's good about it? Whatever. However you want to do it, there's a nice little app that helps you do it. Actually, it's not as smarmy as the way I put it, but actually it's very useful because that kind of intel, again, goes back into folks that say, hey, what are folks wanting to build? What are they trying to build? How can we help them build it better or build a few other things? And, of course, at the end of the day, when you have all that kind of activity going up, it's nice to have a little flow that goes, goes and cleans things up. Very quickly, you don't have to go build that particular app. Uh, how about an application risk, risk assessment app? Oh, risk assessment. This is a, a more common one. I may not be the security guy, but I can tell you that that app, uh, not so nice, very risky. Or in some cases, the risk assessment also says whether or not somebody created like a connector that's exposing data versus data anonymously, things like that. They should have probably had this app with a certain customer out there at one time. You fly, find those like implicitly shared connectors. Somebody created like a custom connector and I implicitly shared it to somebody. Whoa, okay, hold your horses, buddy. I just found you. And of course, the other one is of course, I finding those 
uh, orphaned apps or flows. This is the one that really gets uh, out of hand very quickly. If you're trying to use the admin screens to find that, you will be there forever. All right, other things, little things, little helpers. There's a theme editor for those that just want to quickly help them just do uh, theming kind of stuff. You don't have to go for the pretty pictures, but if they want to, it's good to know that here it is and how it works. And they have something called the innovation backlog. Again, for those process folks, it's again, a good idea to know that it works. It's part of the COE. And this one goes even further. You remember that business analysis piece uh, that we were looking at earlier? This one actually, look, it does ROI and everything else. It's just a sample. You don't have to use it. They're out there. Very nice things to use. And of course, just looking at how it was built. Can my, it might teach you something. Uh, they have a little welcome mail app. That's that's cute. It works. Uh, and they have an app catalog for discover, helping discoveries. Even though it's an app, you could do discovery in so many different ways. They just give you an app as an example guide on how to do it. And that includes uh, templates. They're very big about reuse. When we're talking about center of excellence concepts, reuse is important. Uh, it includes a training in, in the day management. If you have an LRM or one of those like learning modules, eh, this is superfluous. But it's actually, I, I find it a cute app because it actually teaches you how to do a lot of these concepts that are in there. But for folks that do not want to pay a lot of money for a learning app or anything like that, this is actually very, very useful to uh, get into that mindset of getting people trained and following up and keeping track. Uh, it, I'm not sure why it came up with a newsletter for product updates, but they have one. And maybe you can use this for something else besides the Power Platform stuff. But hey, you get to have your own newsletter. Uh, there's a sync for the audit logs, a way to like basically keep track of the thing. So it just looks at the, uh, of course, you have to have the power to be able to connect to it. But it's a, it's a flow, very, very useful. And you can use it for some for other things as well. Uh, you can sync your templates. Maybe, maybe people put templates somewhere and you want to sync them to a common area. Why not automate it? Uh, let's look at that ALM, folks, for the DevOps folks. Uh, there's ALM in a box right over here featuring GitHub and Power Automate. From those tools alone, this is like instant, right? Getting it set up is a little bit of doing, but once it's set up, it's almost like you don't have to have the skills of uh, Visual Studio, uh, ALM lifecycle specialist or anything like that. Getting this set up is easy. Leave it to the DevOps folks that know how to do this stuff to, to maybe run it, but that those tools are available. Very, very powerful. Uh, of course, they need a premium license to run it, but that's okay. They're, they're premium folks. They're doing heavy, heavy development at that point. All right. Uh, there's even a resource request for developers. So I'm a developer. And of course, this is the environment strategy in the case of like, I'm creating a project or a special kind of environment. And rather than having people with the power just willy nilly create environments, or maybe you're, they, t they tell you to do it. And it's like so much work for them to do it. How about have a little request system for them to put it in, request it, it'll get set up and they'll have an environment because you can stand up and kill an environment with this process. All right, where are we do where 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 per wow we're, it's I started around six a little after six and I said admin in an hour let's go take a look at some next steps over here and then we'll go for some AMA pretty soon here just quick 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 next next steps over here some of the things is like we talked about how do you measure how well you're doing there's this concept out there called the power uh, the the the, uh, the power platform uh, adoption maturity. Uh, uh, standard out here. This is wow. essentially the metric, right? Um, this is actually very, very cool because if you want to see where your organization's at or where you feel like you're at in this particular level, there's a, a metric or way to measure. So if you want to say, hey, I'm an admin. When I came over here, we were over here, organic. Hey, but after you hired me and made me do this stuff, we're over here. Shh, we're capable. Give me money. Okay? That's just basically a metric. It's just a metric, right? They're not going to give you money or maybe they will. But the concept is you probably, as an administrator, want to be familiar with this process. All right, and a couple of other follow-throughs over here. Uh, the guidance document, that's the general one. That's your educational path. If you follow those and maybe some of the items in, this slide, in these slides, you will have your, your, training, uh, your training doc to get you there. All right, uh, you want to have your dev tenant handy to learn. If you don't know what that is, we'll actually post that again somewhere over here. Uh, practice, of course, makes perfect. If you play, the more you use it, the better. Being a maker is good because that not so much makes you sympathize with the users, but you can actually uh, make use of the power for whatever the admin pieces can't do, you'll be able to do it yourself. You don't have to wait. And uh, here's the thing. If you are super serious and you're that big and there's a lot of folks that out there, 
you should consider, and guess what? You can engage Microsoft directly, right? They actually have programs to help. They have partners. They have all kinds of folks that will come in and say, oh, you're trying to do things in a big environment. You have uh, maybe you're sitting on a thousand licenses already. You have sprawl. And oh my gosh, where do we go? Microsoft will, if you talk to your Microsoft folks, at least take a look and give you the uh, where you can go next, or for that matter, perhaps actually help you get past whatever those issues, help you get set up. Maybe even take the time to get that center of excellence really uh, set up. Again, through themselves or through their partners, but they're very interested in making this as smooth as possible. And actually, I, I'm not saying this propaganda necessarily. I actually believe it because I'm seeing it. I'm like, oh, really? They're doing all this stuff? Wonderful. So it's a happy situation. Ta-da! AMA time. And I somehow succeeded in talking about admin in an hour. Or did Good I? Good job, bro. Good job. Holy smokes. Uh, so, folks, you're the first one to actually uh, uh, witness this presentation. This has been a culmination of so many talks with various customers at various levels and all car all kinds of customer nuances. And I put together essentially the um, – it's not the uh, – it's the – I would say the common, not the lowest, but the common denominator of all the pieces that hopefully will help as many of you as possible. But now that's what this part is for. If you ask me anything QA – and all of a sudden, oh. everyone's like, oh, my God, we've been firehosed. What now? <laughs> um, I, I had a question. This is Beth. Um, yes, Beth. Could you go back to the slide or the one where it's changing the app owner? Uh, oh, yeah, let's look at that app. That one is. I feel like I've seen that, but then I don't know if I've seen that. No, you did. It wasn't, it wasn't a dream. It was not a dream, and I'm going to go back to that. Uh, I wish there was a faster way to go. Huh? There, you know, there is a faster way to go. You know what? Just simply go and find the slide, Ralph. And is, and is that – that's just for Power App. So if it's Flow, you have to do like one of the um, – you, you can do the Flows. <clears throat> now I think there's some um, Power Automate for admin. Ah, so I, I, I actually skipped that slide. And thank you for reminding me. I should have put the new flow owner one because there's one that, there's one for apps and there's one for flow. Okay. Very good catch. Okay, so the first correction to my slides. Thank you. We 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 got to we got to send Beth a pizza somehow. Ooh. Next time you're next time you're around, uh, uh, you will get the first take of the pizza when we have our live presentations back. We will send it out to Minnesota for you. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, but yes, there is an app. There is a flow owner. So this is just a set new app owner. Okay. It's one, of the first, one of the first things that they do is when they uh, – in the COE instructions is like you have to first go visit these screens and look for apps that you might want to make you, the administrator, the uh -huh. owner of. And the first thing it tells you is like we recommend that you start taking ownership of some of these things. So okay. here's what you do. Okay. That's good to know because we had um, configured the COE before. And it's gotten kind of messed up, so we're going to be redoing it next week. And I've not ever seen this screen before, so now I know the ah, look. So um, this, these, these apps in the COE, you're looking at it as of September, right? So yeah. if you if you install it next week, it, God knows they might add something to to it. Sure. Uh, but at least I know they have this one. Will still be there because this is the favorite. Yeah. Right. Um, you'll you'll find that one, and actually. Uh, in the COE dashboard itself, they have, you know, remember I told you you can embed apps inside of a, a Power BI dashboard? Yeah. This is one of the embeds in one of the screens. Oh. And also the flow one. So you don't even have to go open up the app. You stay in your dashboard and you click and it's inside there. But you have to set it up. It's not for the faint of heart to set up. I'll tell you right now. I just It's one of those frustrating ones because it's like it's Power BI mixed with Power Apps. It's not quite cooked yet. So okay. be very, very careful with those instructions. Okay. Super. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? That was a good one. See, so, hey, look, you see all the apps there. Innovation app. Uh, I wonder if so. That there's app some there. questions in there that say. Yes. Will the slides be required after that? Yes, we're going to share the slides. We are. Um, probably. I will try to get them out there today, but they will be out there tomorrow. Um, 
how long, how are you liking Windows 11? You can come back to that one. Oh, yeah, you see my Windows 11? Ah, I have a blog uh, on, on go to cloudtalkshow.com. One of our last two episodes, we talk about Windows 11. I talk about Windows 11 and how I'm liking it. I'm I'm sorry to for the folks that were expecting a bad reaction, but I'm actually not. I'm loving it. I'm happy. I'm like, finally, certain things are happening like they should. And uh, yes, it didn't take. It took a little bit to get used to everything here being in the middle. And then, um, how do we go about extending the COE, and how often should we be upgrading it? Ah, so uh, let's go for the extending. Uh, uh, there is guidance on extending the COE. In fact, let's go quickly to uh, COE um, uh, Power Platform. Am I not looking at the right thing? Yes, here we go. Let's go to that second like Oh, that's right. I'm looking at it from this account over here. So uh, if we go to the COE, um, let's go here. Set up the COE. What's in the COE? How to use the COE? Um, bup, 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 bup. Somewhere over here is extending the COE. Stand by. Um, bup, bup, using this is the real world. It's really cool. Real world architecture examples. Hold on a second. Somewhere over here is extending the COE. Da, 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 da. Where did they put that cheese? Components overview. Here we go. Check it out. There is a link. Underneath and now the the location is under Don't components overview. Chat. Yep, let's paste this in the chat. Thank you. There it is. Extending and customizing it. This is open source. Okay. You can actually go get it and play and change it. For that matter, it's an it's a it is a managed a, a solution. And there's a, there's a way to basically take any solution that's managed and unmanage it so you can mess with it. Feel free, as they say, to and, go at it. Um, so that was extending the C. How often should we be upgrading it? Uh, so uh, this is a very good question. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, upgrades, especially for the COE, um, let's just say is uh, an invasive activity. As you start doing it, especially because when you install certain things, it has to run those flows. If anyone has done the COE before, you probably have realized maybe from when the first COE came out and maybe something you've done more recently, maybe it's been months or, or even a year apart, suddenly that initial flow seems to take forever and a day and an hour or whatever to happen. Okay, so you want to give those as your consideration for when you're making changes. The suggestion is, if, is to take a look and visit the COE kit once a month is my suggestion and see what's new. If there's something in there you like and you can grab it without uh, by itself, go get it. If it says here upgrade, because they have uh, they they tell you how to upgrade these components. Sometimes all you have to do is simply grab one of the zips, and it, just like any app in Power Apps or or solutions, there's an upgrade. You click on update, and it will do an update. It layers things on and it takes care of things for you. Again, you decide whether or not you uh, it's it's worthy of doing it now. My suggestion, though, is every three months uh, to take a, is to actually do a concerted effort to do updates. If you hear anything on the notes of an update that says we did this because of security, uh, for heaven's sakes, do it. <laughs> right? Don't wait. Right? But otherwise, I'm going to give you the rule of thumb: three months at the rate of the COE's update. Nice. More questions. Um, then where is the line between Dynamics and Power Platform while managing flows and apps? I'm often wondering where I am or where I need to go for certain changes. Ah, okay. So uh, it, it's all about the environments. If the environment, the underlying environment, is a Dynamics environment, in other words, in Dynamics 365, I created model apps. My CRM is running there or whatever specific uh, instance of a Dynamics uh, product is running. That should be the place where any of the flows or apps or anything, you name it, if it's running in that environment, it should be managed from the dynamic screens. It really, uh, as far as monitoring it, by the way, the COE will see everything, including anything that's in dynamic. So in the COE, I will see the apps. I will see the model apps. I will see the canvas apps. I will see the flows. I will see all that stuff even from there. However, that's only for just for looks. I just want to see it. But if you're managing them and working with them, that's the distinction. If it's happening here in these environments, 
use that. If it's happening outside, in other words, Dynamics, the only thing about Dynamics about it is the fact that it's using Dataverse, you should use the Power Platform administration screens or the COE uh, helpers to make that happen. That is the distinction right there. So okay. if that makes sense? Yes, yes, I'm usually working with Dataverse, so that's helpful, thank you. That's wonderful. And then we got another one that says, how do I know if somebody else installed the COE? How do you know if somebody else installed the COE? Hmm, this is a good question. Uh, if you're an administrator, you will find it because there's, let's just say, a whole mass of components in there. Let's go look. Uh, in fact, I wonder if I still have my components still. So, oh, no, my, my, my data got deleted. I'm sorry, my trial's over here. But essentially, you would go find the environment that uh, you will look at your environment. So let's go see. So over here, see, I have a whole bunch of environments. For example, maybe in one of these, maybe the Ralph Rivas environment over here. And if I go to solutions, uh, got it. If you, if, this is like a Jeff Foxworth thing. If you see a whole bunch of solutions sitting in your solutions area and you had nothing to do with it, you might have someone else install the COE because here it is. Now, I'm not talking about these Dynamics ones over here. It's 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 going to be the actual center of excellence. It'll say center of excellence component. And of course, when you look at it, it usually will say uh, who put it in or who was the person that owns it or installed it, right? That information will be there. Let's just say if you see it here, somebody knows about it. Remember we talked about the admins? If there's an admin in your environment that you don't know about, you probably want to solve that problem first before worrying about trying to uh, uh, reverse engineer who did it, right? Uh, it's the case of like, I, 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 it's not like I'm like uh, Poirot and I'm trying to figure out who did the murder over here. This is the case where like there's video, all right? Somebody knows what happened over here. Hey, you, you can't, there's no such thing as an admin that just becomes an admin. Somebody's responsible and that's usually the very, very top admin. If that person is behind the scenes and there's a conspiracy, well, I can't help that. But in the end of the day, find out who the other admins are. They are the only ones with the power and the ability to put the COE because it will demand a premium access to make it to even to run. It won't even run. It'll be like, uh, I won't run. You don't have premium. Shh, go away. All righty. We've got a couple more questions. So we'll take those, and I think we're going to have to start wrapping up. Uh, once the COE is established and DLP is set, and apart from monitoring, what else should an admin be focusing on? That's part one. Part two is how do you go about scaling the power platform with the COE? All right. So ad admins should probably be focusing on the roadmap of things that are coming, things that are changing. That's uh, my highly recommended for an, for an admin. And, and I would say that and being part or at least a stakeholder in whatever nurturing that may be going on as part of the COE. You, they don't have necessarily have to be the one that goes out and tells people what to do. They just want to be part of that, at least to be aware, to be familiar with it, at least to be, uh, you want to be active member, that's fine, but at least a passive member to at least see what's happening. And the reason for that is sometimes when you look at that, especially, and you'll see from your dashboards, when maybe there's an event like a hackathon or a training, all of a sudden there'll be like a spike in apps that appear, in flows that appear, maybe in activity. Uh, you will understand that, that this happened because that that event happened. Well, all of a sudden these people discovered the uh, uh, the, the beauty of desktop, uh, power automate desktop. Uh-oh, we're going to have capacity and flow issues. Me as an admin, that's a good thing that I was watching and keeping uh, uh, and keeping out and keeping up with that. Uh, so that would be the, that would be, I would say the key focus, uh, post fact, once everything is, once you have your desk all set up and the, and everything's all laid out, that would be the next thing. Um, I see the next question over here. How do you go about scaling the power platform with the COE? So when we say scaling, we probably mean two things. Uh, when we say scaling it's capacity is usually what we're talking about. Handling licenses is happening in M365. So the COE will tell you about the licenses, but you still have to do that somewhere else. When you're dealing about scaling, like adding more capacity or doing that space, all the COE is going to do is show you, again, where those things are. You still have to go back to the admin screens, either in M365 or, uh, to, or even the Power Platform, in the case of uh, environments, to add your capacity, your database pieces that you need to add. 
Uh, and that's all it is as far as uh, dealing with the scaling. You run out of capacity, you add it. The licensing guide tells you what units of scale. Of scale. So say you're managing power uh, virtual agents. That's got its own uh, kind of licensing aspect. You buy it in, in essentially packages of so many units of AI capacity. That's just that's just another license. You go in there, buy capacity, click the checkbox, and as long as your credit card's in there, that's it. You got it. Um, and there's really not much more than that, right? So that's how to scale it. Scaling is easy. There's here, well, here's the most important thing though. Scaling is easy. However, planning is needs to be part of it. Don't just scale just for the sake of scaling. You want to plan. It's like, hey, this keeps scaling every two weeks. I'm adding capacity. Hold, oh, stop. Before you add more capacity, why don't you take a look and find out what is going on over here? What is the real requirements of data going forward? Maybe this doesn't belong in Power Automate. Maybe this needs to be an Azure function where it's pay as you go, not pay per chunk, right? Because it's, we're, we're going to run out of chunks and we're going to be paying too much money for what should be a pay as you go. Planning is key. All right. Uh, next question. Do you recommend installing CWE in dev tenant for learning? Yes. Uh, as in using Power Apps. Absolutely. Now, you can use the trial. Yes, uh, that's what. It's, in fact, I think I have four dev tenants that are already like uh, 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 <laughs> that I've used the trial already so often. Here's the thing. Uh, here's the cool thing. As soon as it goes down to twenty dollars, uh, unlimited users, I think I might just go ahead and splurge and and give up my Netflix and do twenty dollars per per month and have a constantly going COE. But that is the best way to learn. Or I just have to keep coming up with new email addresses to create a new dev tenant. Uh, you didn't hear that from me. Uh, but that would be the best way to learn. Get a trial, and you get like all your 25 users in your dev tenant to have the unlimited access for everything. That is the best way to learn. The only thing you don't get is actual data that shows you things happening. So that would be up to you to create the traffic that creates all those nice little records. Uh, what are the other ones? Recommend the AD groups. Aha. Oh, does it depend? See, so this is a good one. Uh, uh, so this is a strategy thing actually over here uh, for adding users to new environments and everything else. Highly recommend to do it in the AAD groups. Even the M365 groups works, but let me let me qualify that. The AAD groups are, uh, how do I say, native to Azure. They're the best groups to use, pure, right? You add the group here, it's going to work when you're adding them because Dataverse is working behind the scenes in Azure in that pure mode, right? The M365 groups are the case of if you're doing a lot of your sharing and caring in Teams. If Teams is the most common way that you're actually sharing and keeping the apps and hosting them, M365 groups are, let's just say, the easiest to manage. Let's just say it's a heavier lift to make the AAD groups work over there. It's uh, M365, they just show up in the drop down. Right, and then you pretty much know who they are. They're you're a member or you're not a member. It's very simple. However, you do not have the nuances of the AAD group. That is that is the what you give up for that. Right, so you're doing straightforward stuff, simple stuff. You want to not be caught up in the management. Then M365 groups. If you want to be very specific and very controlled, and you want to manage it to that level that you actually need AAD groups, yes, you want to use AAD groups. You're, the fact that you're thinking, should I use that groups? Maybe you probably should, because the fact that you thought about it means you probably need that level of access. All right. All right. And I think that kind of wraps it. Um, we're here at wrap. Is that a wrap? If you want to go through your last couple of slides, I don't know if we have anything. Ah, yes, we do. Uh, let's see what do we have. Uh, let's see. I we forgot do. to update those, so normally that would be where we tell people to join or let a friend tell a friend. Indeed. So usually we're like right over. Hang on a second. Right over here. In conclusion, we're up to five hundred and it was three oh, five. when we started the meeting. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, I know we're past four seventy. Was the last I looked. So okay. Hey, last Wednesday of the month, some people might have remembered us. We were the third Wednesday. Now we're going to be the last Wednesday, at least. Just watch your mail. <laughs> it's good because it could change. We're up to 505 as of 505. right this second. Hooray! So Bob tell a friend. Bob. And again, uh, if you need right. anything, I, just pop I, a question. I think, yep, yeah, we can. We ta uh, And you can actually use Meetup to ask a question. I'll actually look at it or Twitter or wherever, LinkedIn. All right, and don't be strangers. We have this every month, so we do mostly. Mostly. <laughs>
We are the we community. Try. We don't this always have free. every month. If someone asks, but you know, hey, what was your cover charge? It was free. Exactly. Thank you. Oh, All right. So. All right, Raquel, you can uh, fade us out if you can put some music at the end and say thank you for the show. We that would be nice. It. Would be appreciated. <laughs> 